After the expulsion of the Vikings, the kings of England focused all their efforts on strengthening their power and state. At the same time, the Vikings, having lost their possessions in Britain, concentrated on plundering the coast of the English kingdom. On March 14, 978, Ethelred II became the new king of England, who immediately after ascending the throne decided to concentrate on fighting the raids of the Danish Vikings. Despite the efforts made, the English king could not cope with the Viking raids. The fact is that the Vikings made their attacks in different places of the coast, it was impossible to protect the entire length of which by placing military garrisons. This situation continued for quite a long time, and King Ethelred II, feeling his powerlessness, decided on an act, because of which he received his nickname, Unready. The fact is that after the liquidation of the kingdoms of the Vikings in England, an impressive kingdom of the Danes lived, it was on them that the English king decided to direct his anger. Thanks to the marriage concluded in 1002 with the daughter of the Norman Duke Richard I, Emma, Ethelred II managed to ensure the neutrality of the Duchy of Normandy, after which he decided to take action. On November 13, 1002, on the St. Bryce's Day, Ethelred issues a decree allowing the Danes living in England to be killed with impunity. Since even before the issuance of this decree, the king ordered secret preparations for its execution, in just one day almost all the Danes were killed in England. Ethelred naively thought that by slaughtering all the Danes living peacefully in England, he would secure his kingdom, but it turned out completely differently. The news of the murders of the Danes living in England infuriated the Danish king Swain Forkbeard and he vowed to take revenge without fail. Already in 1003, a huge fleet of Danish Vikings, led by King Swain Forkbeard, landed in southeastern England. The Danes began to move towards London, destroying all the English troops that came across on the way and ruining the surrounding settlements. Very soon, the Danish army reached the outskirts of London, behind the walls of which the English army took refuge. Since the Danes did not have siege engines with them, they could not take the well-fortified city as a result of a swift assault and were forced to begin its siege. During the siege, the Danes gradually expanded the territories under their control, and the English king was not able to prevent this, but in the end luck smiled at him. The fact is that in 1005 a famine broke out in England, because of which they were given, they could not provide their army with supplies. In this situation, Swain Forkbeard was forced to leave Britain and return to Denmark, without having mastered London. Since Swain Forkbeard was a stubborn and purposeful person, failure did not make him abandon his plans. Returning home, he began preparations for a new campaign. At the same time, the next time he planned not just to capture London and plunder it, but to conquer all of England and take possession of the English crown. While preparations were underway for a new campaign, the Danish Vikings continued to raid the English coast, because of which the English king had to spend a huge amount of strength to repel their attacks. Since the goal of the new campaign was to conquer the English kingdom, Swain Forkbeard approached its preparation as seriously as possible. First of all, he agreed with the Duke of Normandy Richard II on mutual assistance. Sven was well aware that the Normans would not help him in the conquest of England, since the English king was married to the sister of the Duke of Normandy, but the said agreement allowed him to hope that the Norman troops would not come to the aid of the English army. In 1013, Swain Fortbeard, together with his army, embarked on ships and advanced towards the English coast. Some time later the Danish king's fleet reached Britain, then sailing up the River Trent, his army reached the city of Gainsborough and occupied it without a fight. The local garrison did not dare to resist the huge Viking army and, as it approached, simply left the city. After the arrival of Swain's army, representatives of Northumbria and Lindsay, who began to worry for their own lives and safety, hastened to meet with the Danish king and assure him of their support. Following the inhabitants of Northumbria and Lindsay, other representatives of Northern England hastened to express their support for the Danish king. Having established his power in Northern England without a fight, Swain Forkbeard at the head of his army began to move south. After some time, the Danish army, 
having broken the resistance of the local garrisons, occupied the cities of Oxford and Winchester. Thus, without encountering serious resistance from the English army, Swain Forkbeard managed to establish control over a significant part of England. The fact is that Ethelred II counted on the help of the Norman Duke, but after he realized that the Norman warriors would not come to his aid, he abandoned the idea of trying to stop the advance of the Danish army. Meanwhile, Swain, at the head of his army, continued the offensive, simultaneously establishing his power in the English cities that he met on the way. In turn, Ethelred hastily gathered all available forces in London in the hope of organizing a reliable defense and, relying on city fortifications, to try to contain the enemy. After some time, the Danish army completed its victorious march in the vicinity of London. Swain Forkbeard, who had previously besieged London, was well aware that the siege of the city would last a very long time, so when he reached its environs, he ordered his people to start the assault. The Danes hoped that a swift assault on London would cause panic among his garrison and force him to lay down their arms, but it turned out differently. The garrison of the city did not flinch, but began to violently fight off the Danes storming the walls, because of which the assault attempt failed. The Danes suffered serious losses and Swain decided not to try to storm the city again, but instead with his army retreated to the city of Bath. The British did not dare to pursue the enemy, as they were well aware that without the protection of the city walls, their chances of victory were minimal. In turn, Swain decided not to waste time in vain and retreated to the city of Bath to begin to establish his power in the surrounding territories. When news of this reached Ethelred the Unready, he realized that he was in a very difficult situation. He did not have the strength to attack and try to defeat the army of the Danes. At the same time, with his inaction, very soon Sven will establish his power over all of England and the London garrison will have to capitulate. Knowing full well that the English crown could no longer be saved and it was time to think about his own life, Ethelred left London and went to Normandy with his wife. It should be mentioned that the local population rather willingly passed under the rule of Swain. The fact is that Swain was a Christian, although he continued to perform pagan rites after baptism. Thus, he was perceived by the inhabitants of England not as a wild Viking, but as a Christian monarch. Therefore, as soon as Ethelred II left London, the inhabitants of the city voluntarily opened the gates to Swain Forkbeard. Thus, Swain managed to establish control over all of England without entering into more than one serious battle with the English army. All he had to do was wait for the Wittenagamote to assemble to proclaim him King of England. Everything turned out for Swain as favorably as possible, but on February 3, 1014, without waiting for his coronation, Swain Fortbeard suddenly died. The unexpected death of Swain led his army into confusion, and despite the fact that Swain's place was taken by his son Nut, who still had to receive the nickname the Great One, many warriors left the shores of England and returned to their homeland. In turn, Nut, who after the death of his father was to become the King of Denmark, even having lost part of his army, continued to wait for Wittenagamote to gather to proclaim him King of England. It is important to understand that because of the triumphal procession of the Danes across England, Canute was sure that the Anglo-Saxons would not dare to resist and would be forced to recognize him as King of England. As it turned out, Nut underestimated the cunning of the Anglo-Saxon nobility. The fact is that the Anglo-Saxon nobility, which, in fear of Swain, voluntarily recognized his authority immediately after his death, sent ambassadors to Normandy to invite Ethelred to retake the English throne. The Anglo-Saxon nobility decided that Nut was not such a formidable commander as his father and therefore tried to return Ethelred in order to retain all the old privileges and receive new ones. Ethelred soon arrived in England. Some historians argue that the Duke of Normandy, who had previously concluded an agreement with the Danish King Swain, considered that after his death this agreement ceased to be valid. Therefore, along with Ethelred, the Norman detachments also arrived in England. After the arrival of Ethelred in England, the locals, who had recently sworn allegiance to Swain, not only immediately recognized the power of Ethelred, but also began to joyfully join his army. Thus, very soon, Ethelred managed to gather an impressive army under his banners, after which it began to move towards northern England, where Nut's camp was located. In turn, Nut, who did not expect such a swift attack by the English army, 
failed to organize a defense. He, along with his people, was forced to hastily retreat to the ships and go to sea. Historians claim that Nut had to retreat so quickly that he was unable to retrieve his father's body. However, the body of Swain was soon handed over to Canute by the Anglo-Saxons, who kept returning it to him. Having received the body of his father, Nut sailed to the shores of Denmark with the firm intention of returning and realizing his father's plans, having acquired the crown of England. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell so as not to miss new videos.